Bible says that we fight not against flesh and blood, and that our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through y'all to the pulling down of strongholds and casting down imaginations and everything, every thought uh, that is against the knowledge of y'all. So I would like, like to just take a look at the word thoughts and images. Uh, what are the weapons that the enemy uses against us since they're not carnal and that we don't fight against flesh and blood? So the words, thoughts, and images, these are the things, these are the weapons that the enemy uses against us. He uses images. How do we get thoughts? Sometimes he implants thoughts and images in our minds to get a misconception, uh, an illusion, if you will, of our perception of reality. So that's one of the tricks of the enemy. And a lot of times when we use this verse, we often think about, you know, something evil or malicious. But we have to look at the little things. Uh, it's the little foxes that, that spoil the vine. So what are some misconceptions that we hold to be truth, but that also they actually be implanted by the enemy? Because the thing about what the enemy tries to do, he tries to deceive people. and the way you deceive someone is, is that you get something look just like almost a replica of something that is real, but it's not. It looks like the real thing, but it's, it's some minute details that if you don't pay a close attention to, you'll miss it. So even when we uh, look in the religious realm uh, in this Western world, we are predominantly what they what people call Christians. Uh, we have to look at some of the things that we hold to be true. We have to uh, examine these things. You know, we really have to examine these things. So it's important uh, that we do examine these things and think over uh, what we claim or what we uh, feel to be true. Because a lot of traditions that we hold to be true, we have to look into these things. They actually could be uh, false. Uh, they actually could be something that's keeping us away uh, from blocking us from the kingdom that you will, Yahuwah has promises. And you know 
If you've been following us, uh, that's what I've been talking about uh, for the past few weeks now is the kingdom. And today we're going to talk about a little bit more about the kingdom. And we're going to be talking about some of the uh, aspects, uh, more of the aspects of the kingdom. So without further ado, I'm Eliyahu Malak and this is The Great Awakening. Hallelujah. So what are we talking about today? Today we're going to be talking about the law. It's important to understand what the law is. So what we're going to be talking about today is, let me get to it. It's the law of Yahuwah. Like I said before, one of the thoughts that we hear in Christendom is that the law is done away with. So we're going to look into it. Is the law really done away with? And we're gonna be looking at some scriptures that people use to try to uh to try to pinpoint and try to say that the law is done away with. What we're gonna look at from the Hebraic perspective, from the biblical perspective, that's what the Hebraic perspective, they're one and the same. And we're gonna look into what did the most high say, what has Yahusha said, what has Paul said, what are these things that we're looking into? Uh, because we have it's important that we understand uh these truths. So we're gonna look into the law of Yahuwah uh from a biblical concept. All right. So the law of Yahuwah. Let's read this. The English word Torah comes from the Hebrew word Torah, which can be translated as instructions or teachings or law. And we can see that in Proverbs 1 and 8, 3 and 1, 28 and 4. It says, Torah often refers to the first five books of the Bible, which is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And these also are called the Pentateuch. The Torah was written by Moses, so it's called the Book of the Law of Moses. And we can see that in Joshua 8 and 31, Nehemiah 8 and 1. And let me, let me stop right here because uh, about a week or two ago, I was talking to some, some brothers from the church and they were talking about certain things and I began to talk about and delve into the law of Moses. And one of the things that they told me is that, like I say, you know, when you quite don't understand, they uh they began to talk about how uh Moses was the one that wrote the law. And I was like, okay, all right. So who gave Moses the law though? He may have wrote it down, but who gave it to him? Okay, it was Yahuwah that gave Moses the law. It wasn't Moses sitting down and writing some laws from his perspective of how he wanted things to run. No, the law was written, maybe have written by him, but it was given to him by Yahuwah. So as we get along, I'm going to show you that the law has been here ever since the, the foundation of the world. Okay, and we're going to get into that. All right, let's keep looking. So let's look at what is the law for. The commandments are designed to protect us, our families, and our communities. They are a guide to transform the way we think, what we do, and how we should live. Torah teaches us how to love Yah and how to love others. They are Yah's guides on how to live a good life full of blessings. Now the Bible calls them the law of liberty. Now that's that's something. Because what we've learned in Christianity, what we learn in churches is that the law is binding, it's constricting, it's constraining, it's, it's burdensome, it's heavy. But here in Psalms, Dawid, King David, said that the law is, is, is liberating. All right. So the law was not given to mankind to save us, per se, but simply to show us right from wrong. It is an outward expression of our inward faith, our imunah. That's the Hebrew word for faith. So again, the, the Bible, I mean, this is saying that the commandments are designed to protect us and our families and our communities. Now, we talked last week about covenants. 
and how important covenants are. So if we if once we get into this, I'm going to show you how the law was placed alongside of the covenant to give us conditions concerning uh, the covenant that we have with Yahuwah as his chosen. So the law was like a fence. All right. And I'm going to keep going. Let me I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's keep going. Let me read this. We cannot earn our salvation. Salvation is a gift given only by Yahuwah through Yahushua. But listen to this. He does, however, give that gift to those he deems worthy through their obedience and denies salvation to the disobedient. Salvation involves more than a proclamation of faith and grace to all those who believe, but it requires an act of obedience. Now, this is a slap in the face of everything that I've heard uh, through Christendom, through uh, this Americanized version of the gospel, through Christianity, because we've learned to 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 be saved, quote unquote, uh, is to only just believe. See, so it just stays in the realm of believing. Don't have to do nothing. No, don't have to do no works. All you have to do is believe. That's what they say. But no, that's that's incorrect. Believing is not all that you have to do. It's the first thing that you have to do. It's the first step that you take. But it's not the only step that you take towards salvation. OK. How do you show that you believe? OK. I want to get further into that. All right. We're going to get further into that. So let's look. And I like how it says that salvation. Yes, is a gift. But Yahuwah gives that gift to those he deem worthy to give it to. Yeah, it's a gift you can't you can't work for. It. But he does give it to those who qualify. Because grace is a gift, but rewards comes through merit, what you're doing. All right. So let's keep reading. So let's look at the law to the nations. Let's look at this. All right. Exodus 9, 5, and 6 says, Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, this is Yahuwah talking, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. That means set apart. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And look what he says in Exodus 20, 22. He says, And Yahuwah said unto Moses, Thus shall... Uh, Thou, thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. So let lets you know that, number one, this is Yahuwah talking to the children of Israel and talking to Moses concerning his covenant, concerning his laws. So it wasn't Moses, who Hebrew is, in, is his name is Moshe. It's not Moshe uh, sitting in the corner somewhere and writing down, uh, what he felt was necessary. These were the laws that Yahuwah gave. And the reason why Yahuwah gave the children of Israel laws because a law is like a fence, okay? It's a fence around a people that he has set aside from all the other nations. So when you start to read the laws, read in Leviticus, read Exodus and different things, he'll say, don't do this, don't do that. You should do this. Don't don't sleep with that person. Don't sleep with this person. You don't supposed to be eating this. You don't supposed to be doing that. And at the end of this stuff, he says, this, I'm giving you this to keep you, to protect you so that you won't be like all the other nations. So it's a fence of protection. OK, and it's going to set you apart from the other nations that do certain abominations. OK, so the law was to protect a nation of people. So when you think of this, of this, of what we're doing is trying to build a nation, just like when, you, when the Europeans came over here into America and they began to set up what they call the constitution. In order to establish a nation, you have to set up laws that governs that nation. So this is what the Most High was doing. He was giving his people, it reintroducing to them the laws, okay? Because if you go back in the beginning, you had Adam. 
He was given laws to Adam. He was given laws. He was given instructions. That's a better word to use. Instructions on how to live life, how to live on earth. Now, when Adam disobeyed and was kicked out of his priesthood, then uh, the Most High didn't have anyone that he'd give it to until he, he came to uh, Enoch. And that's why Enoch was uh, carried away. He walked with Yahuwah so closely. And if you look in some uh, extra biblical text, it talks about how Enoch actually spoke the laws to the nations. Okay. He was uh, instructing them in the ways of righteousness. I believe it said he would get over 200,000 pe people, kings and people of the earth, great men of, the, of renown, and begin to teach them, instruct them in the ways of righteousness. Okay. And then it goes on to the line where, okay, people started to do evil. The Most High had to get Noah, um, had to destroy the people in the earth because everything was defiled. And then he tried to institute it again, uh, but people was doing evil. So then he got uh, uh, Abraham. He said, I got, I got to choose somebody. I got to choose someone. And I got to protect them. I got to, I got to put something in them. I got to put them a character within them. I got to make a covenant with them so they can keep the way. All right. So that's just a little side note. That's what these instructions are about. So after four generations, we have the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. And so now the most high is saying, Hey, I want you to be a kingdom of priests, a set aside nation. All right. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to reinstitute these laws that we hear from the beginning. And I'm going to place them in your care so that you can now uh, deliver these instructions and show forth my glory to the whole world. That was Yahuwah's uh, ultimate purpose, his design. All right, let's keep going. Exodus 4, 5 and 8. It says, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgment, even as Yahuwah my Elohim commanded me. This is Moshe talking. That ye should do so in the land whether ye go to possess it. It says, keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What nation is there so great who hath uh, Yah so near unto them as Yahuwah our Allah is in all things that we call upon him for? What nation is there so great that hath these statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law? which I set before you this day. So by them having these instructions, their lives were going to be enhanced because they was going to have instructions from the creator. So their life was going to be enhanced. That's why the Bible, that's why you say you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You're going to pre preserve. You're going to enhance. You're going to open up things. If you, if you keep my word though, if you understand what I am doing and follow these instructions that I give you. Things around you is going to flourish and all the nations are going to look and say, man, wow, these are wise and understanding people. What other people do you know that has Yahuwah so close to them and they can call upon him from anything and he gives it to them? Why does he do that? Because they're in covenant with him. They have a covenant, relationship, covenant, okay? They do what he requires them to do. And by doing so, he blesses them. He rewards them for doing right. Okay. That's why it's important to understand laws, understand instructions, understand covenant. Look at last week's video on covenant. Okay. So let's keep, uh, let's keep moving. So let's read this. This is what uh, Yahushua said. <clears throat> He says, and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now, I have this in here because I want us to look at the word iniquity. The word iniquity can also be rendered as the word lawlessness. So he's saying, because lawlessness shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So lawlessness uh, the word iniquity literally means in the Greek without Torah, without instructions. Those people who are in iniquity, they are without the law. 
So the love of things, the love, their love is going to wax cold because they're going to do things the way they see fit. And then it also says that many false prophets and false teachers will arise. OK, because if you are telling people that the law is done away with. You are teaching falsities. So that deems you to be a false prophet. Because if you're teaching people uh, that the things that to protect them is done away with, they're not going to have any instructions. And then th the love is going to wax cold. So that's what uh, that's what's going on. That's what we're seeing uh, in today's culture. OK, because in order to understand law, in order to have law you and, 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 and to and to do the law, it brings you into alignment with the one who is in authority, which is Yahuwah. So when you remove his law, you cut yourself away from his authority. So then that introduces other people doing things as they see fit. So that's why you're going to see laws saying that a woman and a woman can be together. A man and a man can be together. Uh, a woman can be a man if she's choose so. This child, if they want to be, a, if this child's a boy, it can be a girl. And all these other things, which are, it's the byproduct of us straying away from Yahuwah's word, okay? So now we're trying to point our finger at the world when the 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 ones that call themselves the church have done away with the uh the the um constitution okay that's why the most high says that when he comes he's going to not he's not he's not judging the world the world's already condemned he said already but it's the it's 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 those that's claiming to be his people and they're claiming to uphold his statues they're telling you they're thrown away. See, so that's why I, I there's a lot of different things I would have to break down in that. But uh, we're going to keep going. All right, because what we truly call the church. Is not really the church. What we truly call, like I said, the word is supposed to be called out ones, the ones that are set apart. What we seeing now is not what we think it is it's an illusion okay it's an illusion all right uh the, the this religious system that we live in is really babylon it's, it's a world religion because let me let me point this out to you uh i think it says there there are about 2.4 billion people that call themselves christians all right every sunday Millions upon millions of people in America go into these buildings to praise Yahuwah, they say God, and to do these services. And they come out, okay? So of all these people, of all these people who claim to, to love the Lord, I'm, I'm going to use that term now, to love the Lord and to want his, uh, his will to be done on earth, why are we having the problems that we have today? If there really are 2.4 billion people who all claim to be followers of Yahushua, why are we having these problems? That lets me know that there is something wrong, okay? That, that's, that's, that's something desperately wrong, all right? Someone's lying. Somebody lying somewhere, okay? But let's keep going. So let me look at this. So I'm 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 gonna point it down like this. Sometimes I like to take the last of something and put it first. So the love of many will wax cold because lawlessness is going to abound. And the reason why lawlessness is going to abound is because there are going to be false prophets that are going to arise and deceive a lot of people. And they're going to be telling you, hey. This ain't, uh, you don't have to do that. Uh, this is over with, and this is done away with, and that, but you need to do this, and, and all these different things. So it's going to create this chain reaction that we're seeing, all right? Let's keep going. 
So Israel was not obedient like Abraham, and therefore they needed the details of the law included in their covenant with Yah. The law served as a guide for them to ensure that they uh, knew what transgression was and what Yah expected. Abraham was already law observant, and that is one reason the Most High chose to make a covenant with him. Genesis 26 and 5. But when Yah extended the covenant to Israel, the law was placed alongside the covenant as terms to the covenant conditions. Now, this is important. All right. See, the Most High didn't necessarily give and, 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 and put the law next to the covenant that he made with Abraham because Abraham was one man and Abraham already knew the conditions of the law. That's why he was able, that's why you was able to speak to him. Now, in order to really understand that, you have to look at some extra biblical texts on the life of Abraham and the things that he went through until we see him in Genesis 12. He has such a, a, a understanding of Yahuwah's will and his instructions that the Most High didn't really have to deal with him concerning that. All right. But when the children of Israel, a group of people, millions of people come together as a nation, they lived in Egypt for a, a, about a hundred, hundreds of years. So they didn't understand the law. They didn't understand those things. They was in Egyptian rule. So they had that type of mindset. So the Most High had to reinstitute the law to them to show them, hey, this is what I require. This is what I don't require. Because y'all don't know. Y'all y'all been growing up in Egypt and this, this world system. So this is what I require of you to be a, what we call holy, which is Kodesh, set apart. So you don't be like them. Don't do what they do. Don't worship me like they worship their gods. Okay? So this is something that we got to understand. Let's keep going. So this is a scripture because me people, how you know that? What, what makes you say that Abraham had the law? Okay? Genesis 26 and 5. It says, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So this is what Yahuwah was saying concerning Abraham. He said, oh, Abraham obeyed my voice. He's kept my charge. He's kept my commandments. He's kept my statutes. And he has kept my instructions. That is what we call Torah. All right. So the law was there. The law was in place. There was things instituted. Okay. The law just didn't happen with the children of Israel. Because there's a lot of churches would, would, would tell you, well, this was going on before uh, the law. And this is... This is going on due to law. So now when, when Jesus came, he did away with it. And we're going to get to some, some of those scriptures. And we're going to break those things down. Let's let's hurry up. Let me get let's get to it. All right, let's, let's look at this. Deuteronomy 30 and 11 says, Now what I am commanding you today, this is Yahuwah speaking. Okay? Now the word the Bible says that Yahuwah says, I am Yahuwah and I change not. He said he don't change. All right. So he says, now what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. All right. Because how many people have heard that the law was too hard? You couldn't do it. You can't do it. Let's just think. Uh, let's just use our minds. Let's just use critical thinking skills. Now, why would Yahuwah command you to do something that you could not do? All right. The word says that he would not put more on you than you can bear. All right. So why would you who will put something up on you that is too hard, too difficult for you to do? Now, they'll, you know, they'll tell you it's because he wanted to show you that you could not do it up on your own. And so then that's why when 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 Jesus came and took it away, it was to show you those things. He he, he didn't need that. that. That's not why Jesus came. That, that's not the purpose of the Messiah. That's not the purpose of why Yahushua came, all right? That's another, that's another video. But these laws to, were to protect us, all right? They were to protect us and give us provision, all right? Same way a covenant is for, all right? So let's keep going. So let's look at what did Yahushua say? Let's look at these. 
what do you who should say about uh the law uh more rendered to be instructions all right he says think not that i come to destroy the law or the prophets i am not come to destroy but to fulfill for verily i say unto you till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law or instructions to all be fulfilled now this is what he's saying he says don't think that i'll come to destroy the law don't think that i'll come to destroy the the instructions these instructions are pathways to everlasting life don't think i've done that he says i'm not come to destroy but i come to fulfill what does the word fulfill mean it means to fill it up to its fullness it means to enhance all right and if you read Matthew 5, 6, and 7, you will see how you Yahushua began to interpret the purpose and the reality of the law in context. All right? So that's important. I'm going to do a teaching on that some other time. But it's important to understand that he said, I come to enhance it, to fill it up, to bring purpose, to bring life back into it. All right? So when Yahushua, he fulfilled some of the instructions of the pathway of the law so that's why our our covenant is made we have a covenant with the most high and it's built on better promises because there are some things that he fulfilled so we can look for him to fulfill the rest of it all right so let's keep going he says this he says whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so now, look at this. He said, if you break them, but, and then you also teach a man to do these things. Teach him to say, man, forget this. You don't got to do that. It's done away with all these different things. He said, he uh, shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, why is that? I hope I'm not going too fast, but why is that? He says, if you don't do the law and then you're teaching people, not to do it when the kingdom fully manifests you're going to be the least in it why are you going to be in the least in it because you understand the least you haven't done anything and you don't know anything you haven't you haven't elevated to the level of authority to understand how things operate in this kingdom so when the kingdom manifests you're going to be down here all right your level of, 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 of leadership, your level of influence, your level of authority, power, dominion, it's going to be down here, okay? You may not even have anything. You just be, just be happy you just made it in, all right? Because it's important. The more you know, the more you understand, the more you can do, it's the more you can experience and express, okay? you have you have awarded yourself through your work through the working through the instruction through the understanding uh you have given yourself a higher position in the kingdom okay i know that goes against everything that we have been taught but let's keep going this is what he's saying he says for i say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and pharisees ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven so what Yahushua was saying here is that what the scribes and the Pharisees did was they made their, themselves their own set of rules and regulations and customs uh, to try to make sure that people did not uh, uh, disobey the law. But then they started to let the, the laws that they deemed to be right supersede the laws of Yahuwah. And so they made themselves their own righteousness. That's what that's what the Bible talks about. It says people have forgotten the, the righteousness of Yahuwah and they went about to establish their own righteousness. Okay? So this is what they did. And this is what Yahushua was combating in his day. And this is something that we are combating, especially me. I am combating these false doctrines that are uh, blocking people from the kingdom. All right? And to put in perspective through his word, okay, what we are here to do, how we're to do it, so that we can enter in. And also not just to enter into the kingdom, but to manifest his presence here on earth now. I'm, 
I want to see uh, uh, the dead come back to life. I want to see uh, blinded eyes open. I want to see uh, uh, um, uh, the, the lame walking, the dumb talking. These are the things we have to, but, but if we don't understand the law, if we're not operating in the kingdom and, 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 and walking in the expression of the kingdom, we cannot manifest these things. We're not, you're not going to be able to because you have not counted yourself worthy. You have not proven yourself worthy to handle these things. You have not been tested because you don't even know the answer. So you and I won't give you the test. All right. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. Now, this is what Yahushua says. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Now this he said a he said a lot. Now he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now let me uh let me stop there because this is something else I hear uh, amongst people. They will say. What Yahushua did was he established his own set of commandments that we're to keep. Not the Old Testament, not those laws, but he, he took a little bit of those things. But the, all the other stuff we have to do. So he came and he established his own laws. And we're to keep not the law of Moses, not God's laws, but it's, it's, it's Jesus's laws, they would say. So he came. And anything that he addressed, that's what we're gonna keep. But anything he did not address, we're not gonna, we're not, we don't have to keep that. See, he came and he undid that stuff. But there's certain things that he did keep, and we'll do those things. All right. But let me let's let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. All right. I can stay on this for a while, but I'm not. It says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, or the Ruach Hakodesh. Whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Let's continue to say yes, because there's some things that he has told us to do. But it says this, look, believest thou not that I am the Father, I am in the Father, and the Father in me? It says, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. This is what Yahushua is saying. So for you to say that Yahushua came with his own set of doctrine or words saying that he established his own set of rules that were opposing or against or opposite or instead of what is in the Old Testament is false, is wrong. Because this is what he's saying. He's saying that I don't speak of myself. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father. He says that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. All right. So you can't have two different different things going on. How why would you who has sent his word to the children of Israel, those that he has chosen and came into covenant with, gave them something too hard to do, and then when Yahushua came and go and, and just take that off and say, nah, you know, nah, I'm gonna send my son to undo. What I've said to do. All right. So they ain't, this ain't for you. You Gentiles. This is for, you know what I'm saying? It's for Israel. But then they couldn't do it. I'm done away with them. So it don't even matter. But I'm I'm giving you grace though. See, it, it, that, that, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. That that type of theology, is it, it doesn't make sense when you, when the rubber meets the road, when you actually apply it to the word, when you're actually looking at the word. All right, let's keep reading. Well, some things, some more that Yahushua said. He says, believe that, believeth thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? He says, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. All right. Again, Yahuwah came down himself and gave the law to the children of Israel. 
Okay? That's one of the only times that I could think of where Yahuwah came down himself. He didn't call no angel. He didn't call a mediator. He didn't do he didn't he came down himself. It says, This is my law. These are my instructions. This is what I've given you. So you're telling me he went through all of that, then to come thousands of years later to send his son and say, Go ahead and just take that off. But no, the Bible says that I am Yahuwah and I change not. I don't change. My word is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. This is this is scripture. All right. So when Yahuwah said it back then, he means it now. And he's going to mean it even in the eternal. All right. So if that's the case, our conception of the word is off. It has to be off. Okay. We have to look at the simplicity. If Yahuwah said that, then my conception of the law must be off if I feel like it's done away with. And many of us just have been taught that. We have been taught that, okay? But I want to open, I want to take those blinders off. I want to take that veil that the enemy has put over uh, uh, our people's eyes to see truth so that we can truly enter in, all right? Let's 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 keep going. Yahushua answered them and said, my doctrine, okay, is not mine, but his that sent me, all right? So the same thing that Yahuwah said to the children of Israel is the same doctrine that Yahushua was bringing who? To the children of Israel. Because he said, I am called unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is who I'm called to. All right. Yahushua came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. All right. That's another conception. That Yahushua did not come. He did not, when he came, he did not come from the whole world. All right. When you break down that word world, he's talking about the world that he's created for his people. For Yah so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So who should, have, should believe him should not uh, 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 be condemned, but they should have everlasting life. All right. He came to his own. Can I, can I show you an example? Y'all remember the, it was a Phoenician woman. She came and she was begging Yahushua, please. Hey, my daughter's sick. I need you to heal her. I've heard of what you can do. And he 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 totally ignored that woman. Totally ignored her. And he said, it's not for me to give the bread that's for the children and cast them out to dogs. And it was because of her humility and because of her faith, she says, yes, you are, you're right. She said, but at least the dogs can lick the crumbs that falls from the master's table. And he looked at her and said, man, you got, you know what? You know what? Just because that, I'm going to do this for you. Okay? Because that's, man, that's that's a good analogy. So I'm going to give you this crumb. All right? Because his, 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 his mission was to those that he was in covenant with. That's why it's important to understand covenant. That's the reason why a lot of us are not getting blessed because we don't understand covenants and conditions. The Yahuwah only gave the blessings and benefits to those that were in covenant with him. You remember it was an old woman, an old woman. Her, her back was hunched over. And Yahushua came to her and he looked at everybody. He says, isn't she a daughter of Abraham? shouldn't she not be healed? This is a daughter of Abraham. She is in covenant with Yahuwah. So these blessings are for her. She's in alignment. I see her heart. She's walked right with the Most High. That's why That's why Yahuwah's, I mean, there was a man that says, Yahuwah doesn't hear a sinner's prayer. He said, but those that be a worship of him and do his word, keep his word, them he hears. See, we got to get out of this. See, we've allowed the world to infiltrate this word and tell us what it means. Okay? We've allowed outsiders to come and interpret it, this word for us. And now we're carrying these misinformation. And that's why we can't, we can't possess any power. We don't possess any influence, no authority, nothing. 
because we're holding these wrong conceptions. All right. Let's keep moving. St. John uh, 5, 47, it says this. For had ye believed Moshe, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? So if you're throwing away the Old Testament, I believe that was this. If you the Old Testament is called the Tanakh, that's the prophets, that's the uh, the Torah, and also the Nevaim, that's that's the judges and the first kings and all those different things. If you throw away all of that. And you're saying it's just good for just, you know, get some stories, some background or whatever, but not getting the 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 the, the spirit of it, the heart of it. And you're just saying no, we don't need that. How are you going to understand Yahusha? How are we going to understand what Yahusha came to do? Because everything he came to do was explained in the Old Testament. All the prophets and things of that nature. That's what the, the disciples were doing. That's what the apostles were doing. When they was going from city to city, going to synagogue to synagogue, they were showing people, look, the one that's called Yahusha Hamashi, the one that is called Yahusha, the son of Yosef, Miriam was his mother. Yahusha of Nazareth, the one that you call Yahusha of Nazareth, he was actually the son of Elua. He was actually the son of Yahuwah. All right? Because these people wasn't looking for a man named Jesus. His last name was not Christ. They was looking for a certain type of mantle and anointing. There was plenty of people named Yahusha or Yahshua or jo Joshua, however you want to say it. But they was looking for a certain mantle that was going to be rested upon this man that called him a son. All right. So they had to explain the outside children of Israel. Who this man was and also the Gentiles that would believe. To show this is the coming Messiah. This is the one that comes to give us the kingdom. All right. Side note. All right. Let's keep going. Matthew 19, 16 through 17 says this. It says, and behold, one came and said unto him, good master. What good things shall I do that I may in, uh, have eternal life? He says, and he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is a lure. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. That's what he said. Keep the commandments. All right. Keep the commandments. He didn't say believe in me. He didn't say pray to me. He didn't say that. He said, if you want to enter into the kingdom, keep the commandments. You know what the commandments is. And y'all know the, the story. And like I've been saying, go back to the my previous, previous messages. The law was to. Once you begin to do the instructions, it was supposed to transform you. All right. When you under have the right understanding, you supposed to embrace it so it can transform your character so you can be like Yahuwah. So when this man said, I've been doing this since my youth. Yahushua said, I'm going to give you a test then. Go sell all that you have. He said, follow me. You have treasures in heaven then. And the man says, that young man, he went away very sorrowful. He said, because he had much possession. See, he had a misconception. He thought, see, this is what Paul and Yahushua and all these was coming against. People thought just by you doing the mechanics of the law was going to be what saved you. That's not what the law is for. It's not just doing it. I'm just going to do this. See, that's religion. But you're supposed to embrace this thing to let it change your character so it, become, it becomes you. It becomes a, a part of your nature and who you are. And you and, and you will be able to do what's, what's necessary. Now, if that rich young ruler was, if he really embraced the law and let it become a part of him and not just trying to do it to get somewhere, he would he would have he would have known he would have experienced the blessings of Yahuwah already. He would experience the love of Yahuwah. He would have, he would have went on that walk and journey of faith like Abraham did, and would have said, you know what, this stuff don't even mean nothing anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it and follow you, and I'm gonna have riches in heaven. Yeah, I can do that. But he didn't do that. He didn't have that understanding. 
he thought, man, as long as I do this, all I gotta do, all this, all I gotta do is this. But I'm pretty sure his heart was off in a lot of different areas. All right, let's keep going. There's something else. Let's look at this. It says, Many will say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Ye that work iniquity. That means lawlessness. All right. Let, let me see. Let me let y'all see me. He says, master, master. This is many going to be saying this. Haven't we done all these things? He said, but depart from me. I never knew you. We didn't have an intimacy together. We didn't have a covenant bond or relationship. I didn't come into you. You didn't come into me. We didn't, we, we, we were never one. I never knew you in an intimate way. You don't know me and I don't know you. I never knew you. And he says, depart from me, ye that work it uh, iniquity. The word iniquity, I believe in Greek is anomia. That means without law, without Torah, anomia, okay? So he says, you have been acting as if I've never gave you a law to obey. Yeah, you did all these things. You saying you did all these things, but you work without the law. You didn't, you didn't do none of this stuff for me. You did it for you. You went and established your own righteousness and you tried to build your own kingdom. And you tried to use my name to do it. Let me let me break this down. Let me use this analogy. Okay? Because let's 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 say you you go to the flea market, you buy you a Michael Kors or a Versace or whatever, whoever, a Gucci, and you buy one of them fake Gucci bags. All right. Now, the person that made that fake bag, he's not putting his name on it. He's putting Gucci name on it. He's putting Michael Kors name on it. He's putting Brahma name. He's putting that person's name on it. All right? He's putting that person's name on it. Okay? And then he's not doing it. Yeah, he's not doing it. Okay, he's putting their name on it, but he's getting the proceeds of that. That money's not going to Michael Kors or whoever that, that person's name. So yeah, he'll put their name on because he know that's what they they have the name. He know he don't have no name. He don't know he have no influence. But he so he gonna use that name that you want, so that he can get what he wants from you. And that's what a lot of false prophets are doing. That's what a lot of false teachers are doing. That's why a lot of people are doing. They're doing things. They use the name of Yahuwah, but they're deceiving many. And they're doing their own agenda and getting their own glory to build their own kingdom. Okay, does that make sense? I pray that it does. All right, let's keep moving. <clears throat> this is First John. There's something else. Let's look at it. It says, "By this we know that we love the children of Yahuwah when we love Elohim and keep His commandments. For this is the love of Elohim that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous." Again, Yahuwah's commandments are not grievous. When you begin to understand his his commandments, understand his instructions, the uh, David says, Yahuwah, the law of Yahuwah is perfect. It's converting unto the soul. He says that I delight in it. It's 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 marrow to my bone. It it gives me life. It, when I understand, it gives me instructions. It, I gain wisdom, and it's so inspiring. I I see things different. I see the beauty, or in this earth. With you know what I'm saying, I see it. Man. You see, when you begin to understand the instructions, you begin to see the beauty. Things become enhanced. Your vision becomes enhanced. And you begin to love the things that he loves, and you begin to hate the things that he hates. Alright. And they're not grievous. They don't become burdensome. It's only grievous to those who don't love you. It's only grievous to those who who want to walk in another aspect, another way, all right? And that's what the children of Israel did. They they wanted the blessings of Yahuwah without obeying him because it takes discipline to deny your flesh, to not live carnal, 
So that's why they went to other gods. Because when you went into covenants, these are the three things you went into covenant with. Provision, protection, and prosperity. So they knew that they can go to these other false deities, which were fallen angels that had certain levels of power to make things happen, make things real. All right. So they was getting those things. They was getting certain amounts of blessing. I'm telling you right now, that's why people go to these 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 practitioners today and doing all these different type of things, because there's a power behind it. And it's giving you a momentary uh, blessing for the moment, but you don't know you're coming in covenant. It's going to get you on the back end. It's going to get you at the latter end. And it's diverting your attention from reaching uh, the, the, the real path, the real way, the real truth, the real life. And that's why he says, don't be going to no necromancy. Don't be going to no uh, witch. Don't be going to no fortune teller, all these things. Yeah, they can tell you some things and it can be some truthful things. It can be some real things. It can be some actual things. But the, the, the spirit that they're moving in is causing you to worship another deity. And in it is some lies that get you tripped up. All right. Let me keep going. That's a whole nother subject. All right. So let's look at this. It says, and this is love. What is love? This is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye shall walk in it. All right, let's keep going. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahuwah, I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a Elohim and they shall be unto me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, No, Yahuwah, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Again, that is the fulfillment of the renewed covenant those same laws that people are saying are done away with how they gonna be how are they done away with how did he establish them then he brought his son to do away with them but then at the end times you're gonna come and put them in our hearts and in our minds why would he what maybe that's what the holy spirit is for maybe that's what that comforter is for to remind you of the things that help you keep in track and to bring these things to your remembrance. But like I say, you cannot experience what you don't know. If you don't know the law, if you don't understand the law, then the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, has nothing to remind you of. Okay? And then sometimes he tried to tell you certain things, but because of your misconception, because the blindness that has happened to you, you go, no, nah, I didn't. He be trying to talk, but you can't even understand his language. Can't understand. His, he gives some people dreams. He gives some people. He, he he gives people thoughts and prayer. But because we don't have the right concepts, we're missing what he's doing. We're missing it, and that's why he has to send teachers, preachers, the evangelists, people that can give us the right understanding, the right perspective. So then, once we embrace these things, hold fast to these things, then understand how he's speaking and we're able to go further and grow in Yahushua. All right, let's keep going. First John 2 and 4 says, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. See, now this, I'm not saying this. This is what the word is saying. So if you're saying, I have personal relationship with Yahuwah. But you don't keep a covenant with Yahuwah. You're lying. And the truth is not in you. Because the, the, the instructions, the law, the Torah, were the conditions of that relationship of knowing him. So if you're saying, I know him, but you don't know what he desires. If you, if you are married, Let's say if you are a woman, you have a husband. Let's say you're a husband, you have a woman. Your significant other. The way you know her is by communicating with her and understanding her desires. And by you fulfilling those desires, that is showing that you love them. Okay? So you know them. There are certain things that you know about your spouse that others don't know. 
because they don't need to know because there's those things that only you are supposed to be fulfilling. That's the same thing with you. So he's saying, if you're saying that you know me, but you don't keep my commandments, you're not doing what 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 uh I say to do to express your love towards me, you're lying. You don't love me. You don't know me. Okay? So you are a liar. All right? Let's 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 keep moving. Let's keep moving. James 2 and 20 says, But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Being alone. So, how do you show your imuna, your faith? You show your faith by what you do. Okay? That's why it's called a walk of faith. A walk of belief. A walk of doing. Alright? So, let's keep going. So let's look at some biblical misconceptions. All right. Let's look at this. Some biblical misconceptions. This is Colossians 2 and 14. It says, blotting out the handwriting ordinance that was against us and took it away out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Now, we've heard this a lot. We, see, he, he, he blotted out the handwriting and ordinances that was against us. He took them away. They was contrary to us. He took them away and he nailed them to the cross. So we don't no longer have to do those laws. We know he done took it away. All right. Have we, I mean, ha, haven't we heard that? I've heard it. I'm, I've heard that a lot. I've heard that a lot. But let's look at what the word is really saying. Let's look at what, what, what's really being said here. That's why I say you got to go a little bit deeper than the English translation. You got to go a little bit deeper than the conceptions and, and the perception that we've learned in Christianity and to really go into what is actually being said. Let's look. The Greek word here in the Strong's Concordance is 1378, and it means dogma. That's in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. The Greek dictionary defines dogma as from the base, a law. Civil or ceremonial or uh, ecclesiastical uh, church or whatever. It says it's a decree or ordinance. Dogma, listen to this, dogma is found seven times in the New Testament and refers to man-made decrees. So this is what it's saying. Every time we see this word that's been used, that was used uh, in Colossians, Colossians, when we see this word law here, <clears throat> He's saying that uh, this word uh, is always talking about man-made decrees, all right? So dogma here is not signifying Yahuwah's laws, but man-made decrees. So let's go back to this. So blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of, of the way and nailing it to the cross. What were the ordinances? What was the handwriting that was against us? It was the man-made, it was the man-made laws and decrees that the Pharisees and the Sadducees that had made. Those were the things that were against the children of Israel. Yahu, why would Yahuwah make a law that would work against his people? You see what I'm saying? That doesn't make sense. Why would he make that law? Why would he make something that comes against you, that will block you? And he's saying, I want you to come to me, but he is, it's coming against you. No, these were the man-made ordinances and decrees that were made by men that's coming against us. Same thing that we're dealing with now in today's age. A lot of man-made laws and decrees that is opposing us. All right. So let's keep going. Let's look at this one. This is Romans 8 and 14. It says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Mm, I've heard this a lot. I've heard this a lot. And it, it sounds, it's, that if you took take it at face value, it sounds sound like, yeah, we're not under the law no more. We don't have to do it no more. We're not under law. Now we're in a new dispensation called the grace dispensation. For sin shall have not dominion over you, for ye are under the law, but under grace. 
Okay, but let's look at this. Let's look at this. There are eight different expressions in Romans uh, or in the New Testament that talks about the law. So we have to understand the context that Shaul, who wrote Romans, was talking about. Because you have the law of Elohim. You have the law of sin. You have the law of sin and death. You have the law of the spirit of life. You have the law of faith. You have the law of righteousness. And you have the law of Messiah. So when Shaul was talking about this, was he talking about the law of, of, of what we call the Mosaic law and all that stuff that we're not supposed to do? For the sin shall have not dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What was he was he talking about those things? No, he was talking about the law of sin and death. There was a law of sin and death which working the punishment that was under that we that we uh that we could not pay back. All right. We was because of we of us breaking the 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 covenant now that was issued upon us the law of sin and death all right we deserve to die so yahushua came and took our place and did away with that law of sin and death the punishment so now that we can come back into covenant fellowship all right see that makes a little bit more sense doesn't it? all right OK. So now we're under that grace. All right. Because really, if you really break it down, the word grace, the grace of Yahuwah is the covenant. If you if you if you I may do a teaching talking about the covenant, looking at just looking at Bible verses when it talks about the covenant. The covenant, like I said last week, the covenant was this was an unconditional covenant that Yahuwah said. Abraham, I'm going to do this for your children. No matter what, I'm going to do something for your children. Now, it's for those that are going to obey me. All right, it's a remnant. I, I'm going to have a remnant of people in the last day that's going to obey me. And when they do, I'm going to give them the king. I'm going to give them the blessings, the manifold blessings of prosperity, peace, love, joy, happiness, Walking in authority, power, dominion, all the nations of the world going to be blessed and is going to fear them, going to have a reverence of them. And they're going to have such an understanding of how things operate and they're going to be able to display this uh, throughout the nations. This is what I'm going to give to them. And it doesn't matter what goes on, what happens. I'm going to keep this covenant. I will die before I let this covenant go to waste. That's what I'm telling you, Abraham. So that's the grace. The grace was that Yahuwah sent his son to fulfill that covenant that he made with Abraham. And although these people don't believe me, they don't deserve it, all this stuff, I do have some that, that those that do follow me. He says, I came to my own, but my own did not receive me. But many as did receive me, I've given them power to become sons. There's a remnant that do, that did follow for the first 15 years of Acts were nothing but Hebrew people. Okay, let's keep going. That's, I'm, I'm getting too deep. So let's look at this. Let's look at this one. Uh, Romans 6, uh, 4 and 6. It says, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as a uh, Hamashiach was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So it wasn't the law that's the problem. The Bible, Yahushua, I'm not Yahushua, but Shaul said that the law is spiritual. He said, but I am carnal, sold into sin. I am carnal. So it's our carnal nature that keeps us from not being able to obey and uphold the law. He says, but I've removed, I've allowed you to crucify your flesh so that you may be able to live in the spirit. Now, what does it mean to crucify the flesh? What it means to live in the spirit? See, we, we've, we've, like I tell, like I'm, I, I keep drilling this. We live in an abstract 
thinking culture in America. So when we hear these words, we don't even know how to really express them in applicable terms so we can give instructions to people on what to do. So we say, you got to live in the spirit. What does it mean to live in the spirit? It means to, uh, uh, I've never heard anyone say, what does it mean to walk in the spirit? What does it mean to live in the spirit? It means to pray. You, no, it means to have an understanding of Yahuwah's word. To uphold that, to do his word so that it become your character, it becomes your nature. And then therefore, you, you're walking in the spirit because Yahushua said, my words are spirit and they are life. And if you continue in these things, then you're going to be my disciple indeed. And you will know the truth. And then this truth will liberate you. Certain things are, are going to bo not going to bother you because your mind, you're not of this world. You're, you're not going to be even thinking like how others are thinking. The, certain things are not going to bother you because you're on a different plane a different frequency on a different level all right you see why yahushua didn't he never he was he didn't like he didn't care about what people thought the bible said he, he didn't make himself of any reputation he didn't didn't worry about what people thought about him what people said about him good or bad he didn't let that sway him all right and that's how we should be i know who i am so therefore, I do what I'm supposed to do to the best of my ability. All right. So let's keep going. All right. Let's look at this one. Romans 10 and 4 says, For Messiah is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Now, okay. Oh, man. Oh, man. That sounds like this. That's plain as day right there, ain't it? For Yahushua, that's the Messiah. He's the end of the law for righteousness. So you ain't got to do none of that stuff. You trying to get righteous through the law. Yahushua came, the, Jesus came, and he did away with that stuff. He's the end of all that stuff for all those who believe. Isn't that what we heard? Now, that, that, that seems true. That seems true. I mean, what can you do? But let's look at it. Let's break this down, all right? The Greek word for end in this passage is telos. And telos is defined in the Strong's Concordance to set out for a definite point or goal. The point aimed at as a limit. All right. So this word end found in Romans 10, 4 could also be translated as goal. All right. See, it's translated. It could be translated as goal. We find a better rendition of this verse in the Jewish New Testament, which reads as this. For the goal at which the Torah aims is the Messiah who offers righteousness to everyone who trusts or believes. All right. So when we see the word end, it doesn't mean the tail end of something to cut it off. But it means the goal that you're trying to aim to to point to. That's what Torah means. It means to point, to hit the mark. All right. Sin is you're missing the mark. All right. You're going off the path. Torah is to instruct you in the path of righteousness. All right. So let's look at this. So the same Greek word telos is translated in in James 5 and 11. Now let's look at this. It says you have seen the end of Yahuwah. That's if you would take it as how we literally translate end in our uh uh Greco Roman European Westernized American thinking, has Yahuwah come to an end? Of course not, and neither has the law. Both Yahuwah and the law have goals, not ending points. All right, see that makes sense. That makes more sense to me now. Huh? I hope it makes sense to you. See, so that's why even when the, the Bible talks about how the law was uh, like our, our schoolmaster to bring us unto the Messiah. So that means the law was the goal. It was the one that's pointing us to the goal, the aim, so that we could know Yahushua. All right? It's not the end of things. It's cut off. See? All right. So let's keep going. 
This last verse. Revelations 12 and 17. This is at the tail end. This is at the end. All right. This is where we're this is the day that we're living in now. All right. It says, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Yahuwah and have the testimony of Yahushua Hamashiach. All right. So that's who uh, the enemy, the dragon, Hasatan, Satan, the devil, that's who he's going to be attacking. That's who he's attacking right now in the last days. All right. But it says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yahuwah and have faith in Yahushua. All right. And then also Revelation 12, 4, 22 and 14 says, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Why are these people going to be able to enter into the gates through the city? Because they keep the commandments. And these commandments are the instructions to get to this gate, to the city. Those that don't understand these instructions, which is the law, are not going to enter into the gates of the city. That's why Yahushua said that broad is the way that leads to destruction. There are many uh, be there that find it, but few. It says that straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads into righteousness. And it's going to be few that find those things. Why? It's because they don't understand. The instructions and with the purpose of the instruction on why to do it it's certain expressions okay and a little bit later on I'm, i'll go more in depth on the instructions the laws of what they meant why yahushua would say don't do this don't do that okay and break down the different classifications of you of the law okay because we know how to keep laws. We keep them all the time. That's why we're not in jail. That's why I'm not in jail right now, because I know how to keep laws. All right? So you can't tell me that you don't know how to keep laws. Can I give you an illustration? There was a woman that these men, these 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 scribes, Pharisees, they caught this woman in the very act of adultery. All right? And Yahushua said, okay, he would... Without sin, he that is without sin, let, let him cast the first stone. And when he looked up, everybody was gone. And he looked at this woman, he says, where are your accusers? Does any man accuse you? She said, no man, Lord. No man, Yahuwah, no man, master. He said, well, then, you know what? I don't accuse you either. And this is what he told her. Go and sin no more unless a worse thing come upon you. All right? Now he let off the hook because yeah, she did she did commit adultery. But he wasn't gonna go along with these scribes and Pharisees because they were doing their own thing out of their own self-righteousness because they were not even keeping the law. The law talks about the man and the woman supposed to be, be be present. And then they're supposed to be a court case. This was not a court case. They just got this woman, brought him to him, and to, where where's where's the court date? Where's the uh, innocent to proven guilty. Where's the uh, the where's the woman husband if she's the one that's married? Where's the man's wife? What these are the ones that need to be taking this to the courthouse. Not all you all. Not what y'all trying to do. See, they weren't keeping the law. They weren't keeping the things that Yahuwah has established for the nation of Israel. All right. So these are a lot of things that we don't understand. We don't understand. We don't understand that Yahuwah was trying to establish a nation, a kingdom of people, and he had to give them some laws on how to uphold themselves and to keep themselves pure and untainted from the world. All right. Let's see what else. Let's see what else. All right. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. I'm not, I'm not going to talk anymore. All right. So it's important that we learn these things, understand these things. So uh, let me pray. Father, we just bless you. We thank you. We honor you. We give you all the honor, glory, and praise on this day, Father. I pray right now, Father, as your word go forth, I pray that it begins to pierce through, Father, right now, that it begins to pierce through the hardness of the hearts of your people that have been hardened by the enemy's deception that he has now built a wall around your people to keep them from 
understanding your word, Father. I pray right now, Father. I pray that your Ruach HaKodesh, Father, begin to go in like a wrecking ball and begin to right now, Father, uh, bust open the channels of, uh, of of these of these evil spirits, Father, begin to make an avenue, a way for their your people can receive your truth, Hallelujah, so that they can be liberated and walk in kingdom power and kingdom authority right now, Father, as you have ordained for us too, Father. I pray right now, Father, that those that you have called and chosen before the foundation of this world, Father, that they may hear your word, Father, as it goes forth, Father. They may aw arise and waken out of their sleep, Father. That they may, Father, right now, that I speak, I prophesy to the four winds of heaven, Father, and I speak to these bones right now, Father, that they may right now live again right now, Father. I speak to your people, Father, as you have ordained me to, Father, to awaken them, Father, to awaken them to their true a purpose in you right now, Father, so that they may walk in kingdom power and authority as your chosen, Father, as your priests and as your kings on this earth. And we forever give you honor, forever give you the glory, forever give you the praise. In your should mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory be unto the most high Yah. Glory be unto the most high Yah. So like I said, we... This is the great awakening. We are here to awaken Yah's chosen people to their true identity, to give insight to the heart of Yah's purpose, and to make ready for Yahuwah a people prepared. And you can see more uh, on the website and also the YouTube channel. Uh, like I said, you can um, look uh, either above or below this video, and you will see the links to the email. You can see the links to the YouTube channel and also to the website. I have more material there, and I will be putting on uh, even more prayer points. I feel led to uh, as we go forward. I'm a, I may be coming on even uh, more often because there's some more things I want to get into, uh, even like concerning dreams, uh, concerning spiritual warfare, uh, things of that nature. So uh, I got to I got to be on here more than once a week uh, as as we still continue to talk about the kingdom. Hallelujah. All right. So if you would like to support with gifts and donations, uh, you can cash app at uh, cash tag TGA Assembly 12, all caps, or PayPal at paypal.me forward slash TGA Assembly. Like I said, uh, I thank you in advance for your support. And um, like I say, it's, I, I, I pray that this message has been a blessing. And like I say, it's vitally important. Because the Most High is doing something great. Uh, you know, he says that he wants to show us things that uh, we have not seen before. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It hasn't even entered into our hearts. The things that he has preferred, prepared, uh, prepared for us. But he said he wants to reveal those things. We have to understand how he's speaking. And the way we're going to understand how he's speaking, we have to understand his word. That's the problem Yahushua came unto. He said, why do you speak to the disciples? So why do you speak to them in parables? He says, I speak to them in parable because those that are without, it's not given them to know these mysteries. But those that do know these things, he says, it's going to be given to them. So we have to understand, we have to have a heart to want to know, to seek his word, to seek him. What are you saying, Yahuwah? What do you mean by this? And it's all about the kingdom. It's all about establishing the kingdom. You the Most High wanted to establish a natural kingdom on this earth. But he had to choose a people to do this. And what the enemy has done because or what the enemy was allowed to do because of our own disobedience as the children of Israel, the natural blood descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because we forfeited our rights. Yahuwah said, I'm going to cut you off. You're going to forget your heritage. That's Bible. And what other people do you know that don't know who they are? Other than those that have been in the transatlantic slave trade. We're just black people. Okay? Don't know where we, don't know necessarily. I was never taught where exactly I came from. They just say, you just came from Africa. They didn't even tell you what region of Africa. Africa is the biggest continent. 
They don't take West Africa. And then when you start to look at those things, man, I'm telling you. I got some material. I will bring it to you shortly. Maybe not shortly, but I will bring it to you to get this understanding that you have been called for such a time as this. It's time to awaken out of sleep because the salvation that has been awarded to you, the promises that have been given to you, is coming. And if you don't know, the Bible says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. If you don't know your purpose and who you are, the enemy is going to come in and wipe your slate clean because you're not going to be in the proper place. You're not going to understand what's going on, why it's going on. And you, the Bible says that men's hearts going to fail them because of the things that they've seen coming up on the earth. And if you don't know who you are and where you belong, this is not about race. It's not about a privilege. It's not about a some you being better than that person and you got a special it's not about all that it's about what Yahuwah has ordained and to who he has ordained it to now if you have a problem with that you have to take it up with Yahuwah but you don't you don't need to be afraid to embrace this truth to embrace who you are I don't know why I'm saying this I'm speaking to somebody because I speak to a mixed multitude of people I speak to people who know who they are who know the truth <laughs> and I speak to some who don't know and are afraid to embrace because it see this is what it, this is the cost this is what it costs for this truth it costs and people gonna turn away from you because of these type of beliefs see you go to church every day with your family members friends whatever local to you yeah but when you start to really hone into these things, then that's when you're going to be persecuted, right? Then that's when you're going to be deemed crazy. Then that's when, yeah, that's that's what Yahuwah was trying to get at. But he says, I'm telling you, this reward is greater than you can even imagine. All right? So I pray that that be a blessing. And I say I pray until next time. I'm Eliyahu Malak. And I see you until next time. I pray that you be blessed, and I bid you a shalom in Yahushua's name. Hallelujah.